Welcome back everybody. Today we got another video that's coming from a question that was asked in the comments. So again, if you have any kind of questions you want answered, make sure to ask them down below. This is about what do PIs look for when they're gonna hire a postdoc? What qualities or key characteristics are they looking for in a potential candidate? This is an excellent question and these are things that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. I'm gonna save the absolute best one for last, so make sure to stick around for that. So let's get into this. I'm gonna kind of split this up into two parts. The first part, I'm gonna go through a little bit quicker and those are the tangible aspects that they look for. And then in the last part, I'm gonna go over three different key areas that are the more soft skills or intangibles that they look for. So the tangible things, these are things that you can see on a CV. So publications, grants, where you went to school, you know, these types of things. So let's kind of go through these really quick. Um, because some of these are important, but then some of them are not quite as important as you would think. The first one is publications. So I would say for this one, it depends on the lab that you're going to. And again, I, I should preface and say that all of this depends on the lab that you're going to. It depends on the PI. It depends on the institute. It depends on a lot. But I'm trying to just talk general, you know, what's going to apply for most PIs. Publications. You know... At the end of the day, I think that everyone coming out of grad school should have one publication. Um, the more you have, the better. Uh, I had more than one, but I certainly know people that when they finished grad school, they had none. And sometimes it wasn't even their fault. Sometimes they had no publications and it's just because their PI is just, you know, real slow at getting papers out and it's really no fault of their own. However, I think that you should at least be working towards submitting a paper somewhere, okay? they're gonna to wanna to look and make sure that you have something being submitted somewhere. And if you don't, they might start looking at you as if you were maybe not quite as productive as other grad students coming out. So that's something to keep in mind. The second thing is what lab or institute or country that you did your um, grad school in. This I think matters very little actually. Um, I, for a long time, thought that it did matter. And the more that I reflected back at, on my time as a postdoc and, and working after a postdoc, I've begun to think that actually it doesn't matter quite as much. Um, when I was at Harvard doing my postdoc, there were people from every continent that you could think of, right? So we had people from the U.S., we had people from South America, from Asia, from Europe, from Africa, from all over the place that were in all different kinds of labs, and it didn't matter, okay? The PIs can kind of recognize when they think they've found talent from somebody, and it's not necessarily gonna be from someone that came from Harvard. Now, is that to say that doing your your grad school at Stanford is gonna hurt you? No, of course not. Like, it's going to help set you up. Of course, it's going to give you an advantage. But is it an end-all, be-all if you you don't come from something like that? No. So I did my graduate work at Southern Illinois University. This is a small school. This is not a big powerhouse in research or anything like that. And, you know, yet I ended up doing my postdoc at Harvard. Um, I came out of a really excellent lab. It was a, you know, an expert in the field, but I don't think that the PI that I applied to their lab actually knew that. You know, she knew that he was, he was you know, well known, but she, you know, they're in different fields. She didn't quite understand how, you know, impactful this guy was that I had done my graduate work with. And so I think that at the end of the day, if you're coming from a different country, it's it's not going to be a make or break thing. Where it becomes a make or break thing is when you start getting into sponsorship for visas. That's something that's a little bit different. And that's something that I'm going to hope to cover in another video. And that's about you know, the visa situation for international students. Um, now, let's start moving over to some of the softer skills because I think that these are the things that actually make more of an impact. So the first one that they're going to be looking for is your intellect and your scientific curiosity. So obviously, you need to have some level of intelligence to complete your degree and you need some level of scientific curiosity. But what they want to know is, you know, do you seem like a smart person, you know, a, a, a smart individual? And how curious are you? Are you somebody that just is there to do work or are you there 
to actually really learn? Do you care about not just the techniques, but the actual science that's going on? This is really, really important. And I would say there's a few different ways that they could question you on this, but probably one of the best ways that they're gonna, they're gonna gauge your intellect and your scientific curiosity is when they talk to you about their research and they ask you about yours. But in particular, when they're talking to you about their research. So what they're gonna be looking for is an individual that is going to quickly grasp the concepts that they're talking about. You know, you may not be an expert because it's not your lab and it's probably not your area that you did your degree in, but you should have some level of understanding of what they do. And they're gonna to look to see what kinds of questions that you ask, what kinds of follow-ups, what kinds of ideas do you bring to the table? And the more that you could demonstrate that you're interested and curious about what it is that they're talking about, the better impression that they're gonna have. The next area that they're gonna be looking for is really focused around dedication and resilience, for lack of a better word. So a lot of people become really, really complacent when they finish their degree. They kind of have in their mind that um, I have my PhD and I've reached the top and there's not much more that I need to do. And what you need to realize is that when you look at the scientific pyramid of your career, right? Undergrad, it, it's almost like high school. It, it, it doesn't count. Everybody's there. Where you really start is grad school. That's kind of the base. And then postdoc, it's not really just a postdoc, it's postdoctoral training, okay? It's further training and refinement of your skills, experimental design, you know, all of those things. And so when you kind of come out and you seem kind of complacent and that, well, I'm here and I'm just gonna work for a little bit and then I'm gonna go, you know, it doesn't give the impression of this is someone that's gonna work hard, they're gonna grind, they're gonna put in the hours. It's just like doing another round of grad school is the way you need to look at it. That you're gonna have to really work hard, put in the hours, put in the time. You know, when you're at home, you need to be critically thinking, reading papers. You, you, you need to demonstrate to them that you have that attitude. You don't wanna give the impression that you feel like you kind of like know it all already because that's not really true. And if it was, you wouldn't need postdoc training. Nobody would need to do postdoc training. The last thing that they're going to be looking for, and what I actually think is the most important thing, and this is for obviously postdoc training, but even if you were to say jump ship and try to go into industry, they look at the same thing. They want to know how critical your thinking is and how narrowly you look at the work that you've done. So what do I mean by that? A lot of grad students come out of grad school and you know, I wanna say that 90 something percent of grad students are gonna fall into this category. There's only a select few that don't fall into this category, but there's varying levels of this. They're very knowledgeable on the, the experiments that they did, and they're very knowledgeable on what their results mean, and then that's it. They don't have a broad contextual understanding of where do their data fit in with the surrounding body of literature? What does it mean? They don't have a way to visualize what they would be doing next. It's almost like they were doing experiments because their PI told them to, and not that they were doing them because they had hypotheses driven ideas and that they were like moving their research forward what you wanna be able to demonstrate is when they ask questions of you in your interview, when you do your presentation, some of them may be you know, methodology questions like, okay, what did you do here? What was this control for? Things like that. But you, what you really want to know are the, 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 the ins and outs, the details of why your research is important, where it fits into the broader context, and what it means for the scientific field. And I'll give you a really good example. When I was doing my postdoc, there was a, an individual that was interviewing for another lab and I sat in on their postdoc presentation. And I thought this guy was a, you know, he was a pretty smart guy. He had been doing his grad school work for a while and his work was on um, some kind of 
nanoparticle delivery system for you know drug delivery and one of the PIs asked something about what are the advantages of doing this over you know these liposomes that are basically already FDA approved and and the, the guy had no answer he didn't even know that these things were approved or that what he was doing was in direct competition to those he just he he demonstrated a complete lack of understanding of the surrounding body of literature and where his work fits in. And that's the trap that you do not want to fall into. When you're coming out of grad school, you want to be able to start piecing together everything and knowing how each thing fits together and what your research is really telling you. You're not doing an experiment because somebody told you to. If you want to be in a position where you don't want to think about it and you just want to do the experiment that somebody's telling you to, then you shouldn't have been doing a PhD and you shouldn't be doing a postdoc. You should just get a master's and go into industry, right? So if you want to do a postdoc and you're thinking of going into academics or even into industry, you know, when, when you get hired for, you know, a, a position with a PhD, they're hiring you for your brain. They're hiring you to be able to think critically, to understand every moving part and how it all fits together. That's what they hire you for, is you need to know everything. You need to know the techniques, you need to know the competition, you need to know you know, the science, You know, dating all the way back to the beginning of the field. You need to know all of it. You need to be an expert on all of it. Um, and if you can't demonstrate that, you know, they're not gonna expect you coming out of grad school to be at that level, but what they will expect is to see some semblance of that, right? They don't want to see, you know, a tech, somebody that just does the experiment and doesn't know what it's for. They want to see someone that's really thought about it and understands what it is that they're doing. So I think those are the big things that PIs are going to be looking for when you apply for a postdoc position. There's obviously others, and this is kind of painting with a broad brush. I'm sure that you know, more junior faculty are going to look for different things than a, you know, seasoned veteran. I'm sure that if you go to a big institute or a small institute, you know, all these things are going to change. But I think across the board, these are the big things, you know, there's other things that I didn't go into, like scientific integrity, like, yeah, scientific integrity and data integrity is the most important thing that you can have as a scientist. But, you know, I think by now that should be a given. So I kind of didn't want to go into those. I went into the ones that maybe you wouldn't have thought of that really are, you know, critical things to have. So with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.